Hello everyone. I wanted to work this problem here from the 1.1 discussion post because uh, there was some confusion. It's very easy to, to go awry here. There's lots of computations involved and because there's going to be one like this on the midterm. And so I wanted to show you uh, the straight technique and give you some suggestions so that you can ace that on the midterm. Now um, let me drag a clip in here. Um, it's going to be my take on the fam famous mnemonic PEMDAS, which teaches you the order of operations. I've cha changed PEMDAS to be PERMDAS, and I've written it in a vertical manner. And there's a reason for that, and uh, let me explain that. First off, we're talking about uh, individual levels here, addition and subtraction. They are of the same power. And so by itself, PEMDAS seems to imply that addition become, comes before subtraction. And that's not the case. They're on the same level. They have the same power. You can do them in any order. And they are inverse operations of each other. You know that if I take five steps forward, five steps back will undo the addition. In other words, five minus five will bring me back where I was. So addition undoes subtraction and vice versa. And so too with this next uh, level, multiplication and, div and division, one of these will undo the other. And so they are inverse operations. And that's why I added the R to PEMDAS, because the inverse operation of an exponent is taking a root. And the inverse operation of taking a root is an exponent. And these guys undo each other. And so we ch changed, uh, please excuse my dear aunt Sally, to please excuse really my dear Aunt Sally. This is a more um, suitable structure for our class and really for algebra in general. And of course on top I have the parentheses within parentheses to show you that you always do the innermost first. So let me uh, delete this and bring in my drawing program and let's use PERMDOS to solve this problem. And so um, what I'm going to do here is work the parentheses on the top first and I'll do this subtraction and with with uh, absolute power bars you have to imagine that there's parentheses here and you need to do what's inside there before you activate the absolute power bars. I'm going to work the top and the, fra and the bottom of the fraction simultaneously but separately and that is sort of like an implied idea of um, the order of operations. So on the top, I've got this subtraction, 5 minus 6, which I'm sure you'll agree with, it, it, with me is a negative 1 squared. And then I'm going to subtract 2 times the absolute value of 3 minus 4, which is negative 4. Now on the bottom, I've got um, subtraction, multiplication, and exponentiation. And you know that exponentiation will come first. So I'm going to go ahead and crunch out that 5 squared to give me a 25. And now we continue on using our order of operations. We'll do this exponentiation here first. A negative 1 squared is simply a 1. Minus 2 times. I'm going to go ahead and activate the absolute power bars. And out of this will come a positive 4. And of course, there's multiplication between that 2 and that 4. On the bottom, I will do the multiplication ahead of the subtraction. So I'm going to have 89 minus 75. Now all we have to do here is uh, take care of the multiplication in the top before the subtraction. So I have 1 minus 8. And I'll go ahead and do the subtraction in the bottom to give me 14. Now we do the 1 minus 8 on top to get a negative 7 over 14, which simplifies simply to negative 1 half. And that is the answer that I'll box. Now since this is a computation heavy problem, it's quite quite likely that I made a mistake as I work from top to bottom. So my suggestion on the midterm is that when you hit this one, and you'll hit it early, solve it, and then go ahead with the rest of the exam, and then double back and do it again, and see if you get the same answer as a sort of check. Now, I'm not going to do it again. Rather, what I'm going to do is show you how um, it can be solved using Wolfram Malfoy. Um, I've already typed it in here, and what I want to do here is um, let's. I only want to show you that uh, I'm going to 
I'm going to delete this right here. And what I have here, as you can see, is the bottom of the fraction. And I want to show you that Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha has the order of operations built into it. It is going to do this exponentiation first, then the multiplication, then the subtraction when I hit the enter bar, which I'll do right now. And as you can see, the result is 14. And that's what our bottom of our fraction equaled. Now, let me do a uh, back. And let me do a paste in here. And there is the problem that we solved. But I want to show, show you something here. If I hit enter right now, I'm going to get a crazy answer. And I told you that Wolfram Alpha understands the order of operations. Well, then how come I've copied this problem? How come I get this crazy answer? Let me go ahead and hit this and show you. I'll have to drag up here a bit. Show you that uh, the decimal approximation for this is some crazy uh, negative 74 uh, endless decimal. So Wolfram Alpha didn't give us the proper answer. So how is it that if the order of operations are built into it, it doesn't give us a straight answer? And the reason is because it thinks that this division is simply in the middle of the problem. It doesn't realize that it has a f fraction, that all of this here on top is the top of a fraction. And let me put in the proper sign there, a left parentheses, and then go to the right left here and put in the left parentheses. So there's the top of the fraction, parenthesize, and I'm going to parenthesize the bottom of the fraction like this. And now Wolfram Alpha will, in fact, give us our negative 1 half when I hit enter. There you go. So it does understand the order of operations, but you need to tell it what's the top of the fraction and what's the bottom of the fraction, and you use parentheses for that. OK, I hope that helped. I'm going to say goodbye to you and talk to you soon.